The Firmament, an Hebrew cosmology of Genesis chapters 1 and 7. Hypothesis. The cosmology of Genesis chapters 1 and 7 corresponds to the visible world. Presuppositions underlying this video. Genesis describes the visible world. Genesis defines its own words in plain terms. Genesis was written against ancient polytheism. Some scoffers attribute to Genesis a falsified cosmology. In our schools, they taught us a contrived Hebrew cosmology that has a firmament, a solid sky or dome with holes in it to let rain fall to earth. However, that cosmology has two main problems. First, the Hebrews never believed in such a scheme. And second, the language of Genesis 1 and 7 does not describe such a scheme. Rather, the cosmology of Genesis 1 views the creation as having two parts, the sky and the earth. The sky starts at the surface of the earth and extends upwards. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. At its origin, the earth was covered with deep water. Because ancient polytheists prayed to their gods for rain, Genesis explains how it was the God of the Bible who created the sky from which rain falls. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. The word expanse formerly translated as firmament, is defined by Genesis as the sky, which is also called the heavens. God made the expanse, and separated the waters that were under the expanse from the waters that were above the expanse. And God called the expanse heaven, or sky. The Bible never speaks of a solid dome in the sky. Rather, the expanse is the sky extending upwards from the surface of the earth. Thus, Genesis defines its own words by ordinary terms applied to the visible world. Light is day. Darkness is night. Dry land is earth. Waters are seas and expanse is the sky. Genesis chapter 1 sets the stage for the events of Genesis chapter 7, verse 11. All the fountains of the great deep burst forth, and the windows of the heavens were opened. And rain fell upon the earth forty days and forty nights. The parallelism of fountains of the great deep bursting forth, with windows of the heavens opened, depicts not holes in a solid dome letting the rain fall downwards, but cracks in the earth letting water burst upwards before falling back to earth. From these verses we can make five deductions. The cosmology of Genesis 1 and 7 befits the visible world as we know it. Genesis portrays the creation as the work of a single deity who alone provides for rain to fall from the sky. Genesis chapter 1 sets the stage for the great flood narrative of Genesis chapter 7. Scoffers, who elaborate mythological cosmologies, tell us more about themselves than about the Bible. Creationists, who make the waters and the expanse into astrophysical processes, 
may be pressing too hard.